Hello YouTube, this is Frugoy and welcome to the first part of the complete and utter beginner's guide to the Airbus in FSX. Now, I put up a, a kind of an introductory beginner's guide flight before with the Airbus. I got a lot of feedback saying it wasn't beginner enough, partly because of the route I chose into Gibraltar with a manual landing at the end is very confusing, partly because it was a fully loaded video. I kind of made a bunch of bad mistakes there, bad decisions. So I wanted to do a this is how you fly the Airbus and plan a route completely on the cheap. So that's why you're looking at a web browser. We are going to fly today from London Gatwick to uh, Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport. So EGKK to LFPG. First thing we're going to do, because this is a complete beginner's guide, and I have to move things around on my desk a little bit, but if you want to know where you're flying from and where you're flying to, just type in the name of the airport and ask for its ICAO code. So if I wanted to know Gatwick, ICAO code, I typed that wrong. But here we go, list of airport codes by ICAO code, EGKK is London Gatwick. Simple, okay? So London Gatwick is EGKK. We are going to Paris Charles de Gaulle. Paris Charles de Gaulle, which I can't spell. Ask for its ICAO code. You will find that is LFPG, Lima Foxtrot Papa Golf. So that's where we're flying between EGKK and LFPG. Now, to figure out your route, I already mentioned this in a previous video, but I'm going to show you how it works. Key into Google, Root Finder, FSX. First link is rfinder.acerlink.net. Click on that. We are flying EGKK to LFPG. Now, it asks you the on route altitude. It's basically going to search its database to find routes in the altitude range you specify. So between this and between this, to give it a chance of succeeding, I tend to start at 210, so 21,000 feet, up to 39,000 feet. Flight level 390. You tell it, yes, use SIDS. Yes, use STARS. Yes, we are RNAV equipped. Now, what RNAV is, is basically area navigation, the ability to navigate from point A to point B using radio signals. We have that feature in the Airbus. In fact, most aircraft flying today do. So yes, RNAV equipped is just fine. Give me SIDS and give me STARS. Now, this is not actually going to give us the SIDS and STARS. It's going to leave a gap in the uh, route. And you'll see me mention this many, many times on other videos, um, that the first waypoint of your route is actually the end of a SID, and the last waypoint of a route is the beginning of a star. That's what you're telling Route Finder here. Give me the SID and star waypoints. So find route. It's going to have a little think. And when it comes back in a second, there is our route. So it looks very, very confusing. Look at this. Cruise altitude somewhere between this and between that. So it doesn't really care what you do but the route does fit that so we could fly i don't know flight level it's a fairly short route so i guess flight level three three one zero would work for that um and it's telling us the route here it looks very very confusing it's really not let me explain a route to you we're taking off from egkk we are then flying a sid a standard instrument departure we'll get onto that in a second to a waypoint called hardy we are then flying to a waypoint called Zidel, then flying to a Petax DPE, and finally landing at LFPG. But Frugal, what are those letters and numbers in between the waypoints? What do they mean? Those are called airways or air corridors, depending on where you're from. They are an air traffic control, um, control basically. They force a bunch of aircraft down a narrow corridor of space, approximately five miles wide, um, so that they can put everybody in order somewhat. So what they're saying is to get from that waypoint to that waypoint. Now bear in mind as well, the world happens to be round. So flying a straight line between two points doesn't always work out the best. Air corridors tend to account for that as well. So between Hardy and Ziddle, we are telling it there is a, or it is telling us there is an air corridor called Mike 605. We will need to use that in the Airbus onboard database to tell the Airbus, once you get to this waypoint, fly this air corridor to this waypoint. And similarly, at this waypoint, find Uniform Mike 605 to go to Petax. And then from Petax, again, Uniform Mike 605 to DPE, and then the star. Very, very simple. Here is our route down the bottom here. Now, what I typically do when I'm planning a route is I make a note of all this stuff. That's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna fire up a little notepad app here. No magic going on. That is our route. Simple. Okay, now, SIDS. We're going to get onto stars in a later video, but SIDS. We are flying from London Gatwick. So, what you need to do is go find some SIDS and stars, but first of all, you need to look at the weather. So, the way you do that, fire up Google and type in METAR. That's how you get the weather report for an airport. METAR, EGKK. It will give you a bunch of links. I like this one, all METSAT. 
click on all Met Sat because it shows you the meta here, which most people don't know how to read, which is just fine. It's basically telling you the time, wind direction, speed, and so on and so on. But if you don't know how to read it, it actually decodes it over here and over here. So what it's saying is five minutes ago, so we're using real world weather, there was a five knot wind from the south, varying southeast to south, southwest. So the wind is going whoosh, pretty much that from there up, okay? Predominantly south, southeast, south, southwest, okay. And it's only five knots, it's not very big. So given that it's not a very big wind, we are flying an Airbus and we're not gonna use ATC because this is an absolute beginner's guide. We pretty much have our choice of runways. We'll get onto that in a second. Normally though, if the wind was coming from say the west, you would take off into the wind. So a wind of let's say 270 gives you runway 27. You take off into the direction the wind is coming from. It's telling us temperature is 13 degrees, it's 58% humidity, there is our pressure that we're looking for, 1005. The pressure adjusts the altimeters in the aircraft so that the runway is at the altitude you expect it to be at when you land and when you take off and all that good stuff. Visibility is pretty good, there are no clouds beneath 1500 meters, no cumulonimbus. It is a pretty good day to fly, even though it's nighttime and I'm going to set it up as daytime. But even so, it's a pretty good flight conditions. So, sits and stars. You will typically, if you're on a budget, do it this way. Type in EGKK uh, charts into Google. It will give you a bunch of links, which I am not going to click. Now, you can click on these, and it will fire up a PDF showing you the various charts for the airport, and that's fantastic. I don't know the legality of some of these, so the last thing I really want to do is click on one of these and then broadcast something which is potentially illegal. Um, but by all means, go and search in Google, find these charts, and take a look for yourself and decide for yourself if they are legal or not. Try to use legal ones. In fact, to that end, I recommend using a service called Navigraph. Whoops, there's my calendar. Let me get rid of my calendar. Go away, calendar. Okay, I recommend using a service called Navigraph, which you can find here. It is very cheap, very convenient, and very accurate. That's Navigraph. Go create an account. I'm already logged in. Navigraph comes with an application for free called Navigraph Charts, which you download. That lets you download and find charts that you want. So I already have Gatwick here. Here is Gatwick. In fact, let me bring this up a little bit better. Here is Gatwick. We are going to be parked at stand 6-0. And we are going, we already said we can choose our runway. So we are going to take off probably on runway 26 left. Runway 26 right doesn't actually exist. That got obsoleted quite some time ago. So we're going to take off on runway 26 left. So we're going to be going that away. The reason that's important is looking at the SIDs and stars. Look, there are a bunch of SIDs and stars here. They all have a name. SID for runway 8 left, 26 left, and so on and so on and so on. We are going 26 left to the south since France is to the south of London. So that one. Now, this is a very, very interesting chart, and I'm gonna explain how to read this chart in a second. So we're not actually in the cockpit yet, and it's gonna be a while before we are. I wanna show you guys what all these things mean, but this is an interesting chart because if we fire up Route Planner, there is our route. Our first official waypoint is Hardy. Now, if we go and look at Navigraph, look at that. There is a SID from runway 26 left, which ends up at Hardy. That's the SID. That's the SID we want right there. Okay, there are a number of SIDs we can choose. In fact, we could actually choose a couple of these. We're gonna choose the Hardy 5M or 5V SID. Now, what a SID is, is a standard instrument departure. It is a method of leaving an airport in a defined orderly fashion so that other aircraft don't collide with you and air traffic control knows that they can expect certain things of you. This is a SID chart. It is very, very easy to read, although it looks horrible. What it's telling you up the top here is this is a SID for runway 26 left and 26 right. Very simple. It is for EGKK, which is Gatwick at London. Great. These are radio frequencies. So if you are using ATC like VATSIM, ground is on 121.8, delivery on 12195, tower is on one of those two, and so on and so on and so on. Pretty good now. Aerodrome elevation is 203 feet, so we're all good there. Now this is, I think this is usually obstructions. There are obstructions 2,000 feet in the air, that way, that way, that way, and that way. Those are the rolling hills of the South Downs, I should expect. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, these are beacons, navigation beacons. There's Ockham there at 115.3. There's Midhurst, mid-114. There is Goodwood, 114.75. Uh, Don't need to worry about those too much. We are going to be using the flight computer, the FMS, on the Airbus to manage all this for us. But there are a couple of things we do need to pay attention to. 
And so I'm going to zoom in and show you what they are. So let me just come up here and click to zoom. There we go, the area zoom. I'm going to zoom on that. Okay. The things you need to pay attention to are all these numbers. So what it's telling us is we are going to take off and it wants us at this point, you see this, at or above 2,500 feet. That point is intercepting the radial 320 to SFD. So here is SFD. Again, the aircraft should manage this for us and it will actually plot this into the route as a, as a waypoint for us to see. But if you wanted to cross check it manually or even fly this manually in an aircraft other than an Airbus, you would tune your radios to 117.0 and tune the course to 320. When you intercept that course, you should be at or above 2500 feet. You're then gonna start a left turn down here until you get here. Now this is the 117 radial, see that? Sorry, 177 radial to Occam. So you could tune your radio to 115.3. At that point, when we intercept that point, so 177 radial after the left turn, we want to be at or above 3,000 feet. We continue climbing at 18 miles, that's what the D means, D18 from Occam. We want to be exactly at 5,000 feet. Immediately after that, we start the climb again, so that at 23 miles from Ockham, we are exactly at 6,000 feet. Very, very simple. We will go down here now until we intercept the 147 radial to Midhurst, at which point we will turn left on the 147 radial, taking us down to the Hardy waypoint, which it tells you is, hard, sorry, the Bogner waypoint here. Bogner is... 25.5 miles away from Midhurst. So, if you have followed all your radio intersections, if you're not flying an Airbus, which can do it all for you, then you will find yourself at Bogner if you have just proceeded on a court on the 147 radial here from Midhurst. See, there's Midhurst. And you are precisely 25.5 miles away from Midhurst. You can cross check that by checking that you are 21.3 miles away from Goodwood. That's what it's saying there, D21.3 from GWC. If you have a GPS, the location of this particular waypoint is northing 50, 42.1 minutes, and westing 0, 15.1 minutes. Very, very simple. Okay, so far, so good. We will then turn onto a heading of, sorry, onto the 118 radial from Goodwood until we are 52.9 miles away from Goodwood. That is Point Hardy. Now, it looks very, very confusing. Talking through it like that is actually quite confusing. Lots of things to manage. If you are flying a Cessna or a Beach Baron or something like that, you would be doing pretty much all of this manually yourself. I'd probably do a video on that at some point. The good thing for you guys to remember though is the Airbus will do it all for you. This is, after all, a beginner's guide. All we need to do is once we get in the aircraft, double check that we have these altitude constraints. So at or above 2,500 here at or above 3000 it's at or above because there is a line underneath the number but not on top of the number okay if it was the other way around with a number on with a line on top it would be at or below so at or above 3000 here at 5000 here at 6000 here and so on now the good thing about this actual sid here is that we can actually ignore these two kind of ignore these two uh, waypoint constraints in that we just want to climb pretty steeply after takeoff to 5000 that should given the distances we're flying, make us uh, comply with these constraints without any problem at all. So we want to climb to 5,000, hold there, then climb to 6,000, and then after that waypoint, start climbing up again, since there are no other altitude constraints and we can climb to our normal cruise level. There are notes down here. We are flying the Hardy 5 Mike 5 Victor SID, and it will tell you here what to do. So step by step, what to do is all down here. Climb at 259 degrees, at 10.5 miles from mid on the 167 radial from Occam, turn left onto the 177 radial from Occam. So it's giving you some leeway there. Once you intercept the 167 radial, then you're going to start turning left and that will have you intercept the 177 radial. Then at 28 miles from Occam, turn left onto the 147 radial from mid, then go to Bogner and Hardy and you're good to go. Here are the constraints right here at or above, at or above, at and at. Simple, simple, simple. Let's look at some other things here. SFD, 5M, and 5 Victor are not normally available from 0600 hours to 2300 hours UTC. Okay, that doesn't bother us at all. Hardy, 5M, and 5 Victor, these are hours, are not normally available 2300 hours to 0600 hours. 
Aha, so if we were flying in the middle of the night, we could not use those SIDs because of noise restrictions or time restrictions. Okay, now we have some cross noise monitoring points here. So from 1200 feet up to 3000 feet, we need to be somewhat cautious of how we're climbing. So not a full power climb, simple enough. Our maximum speed below one flight level 100 or 10,000 feet is 250 knots. It always is. And it's also saying, now this is very interesting, no turns below 700 feet. So when we take off, we fly runway heading until at least 700 feet. Um, just important to know. Minimum climb gradient, it's telling us runway 26 right. There is not a published minimum climb gradient because there is a high earth bank that we need to be concerned about. Well, runway 26 right doesn't exist anymore. It's 26 left, so we don't care about that. That is how we choose our SID. Simple as that. We went, just to summarize, we went to Route Finder. We put in that we're flying Gatwick to Paris Charles de Gaulle. That gave us a route. We told it we do want SIDs and stars, so it told us the first waypoint is Hardy after the SID. We can then Google, or I use Navigraph, but you can Google, find the SID from the runway that makes sense based on the current weather conditions that ends at Hardy. For us, Hardy 5M, Hardy 5 Victor, doesn't matter. Either one is, is good. They're pretty much the same. So with all that done, we can now go and do the fuel planning for the Airbus before we even get into the cockpit. Now, I'm going to run up the Airbus fuel planner here, but I'm not going to execute it. What that means is I'm going to set everything up, but I'm not actually going to tell it to load fuel and payload. You tend to wait until the, the uh, flight sim is running for that. On my computer here, it's not currently running. So just check I'm still recording, which I am. We are going from EGKK to LFPG. The Aerosoft Airbus X fuel planner is very good. It's told us the distance is 166. We're going to be carrying a random number of passengers today, 103. Random amount of cargo. That's too much because it turned red. There we go. Quite a lot of cargo, 103 passengers from EGKK to LFPG. We are good to go. All we need to do now is fire up FSX and start keying in our route. Pay attention to this number, 5,746 kilograms of fuel. We will need to enter 5.7 into the FMS when we're setting up the route. This is another reason why I'm not closing this down. This will remain running on a different screen until we get to that stage in the cockpit. So see you in the cockpit in a few seconds.